It's time for my third Grey's Anatomy review. But for this one, I brought a friend. Please welcome my colleague, Dr. Luis Espina, Hello. who I actually did residency with, and he was my senior resident. So he taught me everything I knew. Not everything, but yeah. You ready? You have to do that, by the way. No. No, 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 come on. <laughs> no, you have to do it. Beep, 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 yeah. Beep. You didn't sign the divorce papers. Fine, I get it. End of discussion. What? I actually don't know anything about their romance. Okay. And I know people in the comments are already getting their bows and arrows out to hunt no, me down. It's but okay. It's okay. I, I, just, I, I, I don't I, think they're married. I think he's about to divorce wifey. Oh. And she's trying to get him to do that. Dr. Bailey? Henry Lamont, age 42, is scheduled with Dr. Shepard for a spinal implant to control the pain of his herniated disc. Is allergic to all pain medication. Ew. Is that? Porn. Porn. <laughs> As in porn? All right. What are we watching? D Correa, go stand in the hall. Uh, Miss you have to be sensitive to the needs of the patient. Yeah, but that's overstating it. Have you ever had a patient do that? No, I, I don't think the, I don't think the television could get CNN, much less uh, pornography. <laughs> Look, we can't have porn in here. This is a hospital. It's for my pain. My doc says it releases endorphins in the brain. It helps keep my pain at a manageable level. Not gonna lie, if that helps him over an opioid addiction, I'm with getting him a private room. I am a firm believer in the what it takes school of medicine, so whatever it takes to make the patient comfortable. Okay. Pete Willoughby, 25-year-old GSW to the chest. Immediate return of 860 cc's of blood from the oh, chest. Oh, damn, this hurts. He's put out more than 200 cc's over the past hour. They never tell you in movies how much it hurts to get shot. Push morphine, two oh. milligrams. Alex, this is my case. I don't understand in this show, when they say a person's lost a liter of blood, that they're hanging out, talking, casually, just chilling. His hair looks good. His hair looks good. His hair looks good. Looks like you'll be able to go home today, Alex. But I still have patients to see. No. No more patients. I'll be back to check on you later. You should know I'm thinking of leaving Thatcher. I should never have married him. I'll leave him, you leave Adele. Then when our residency's over, we can both get jobs at the same hospital. Why don't you get her meds ready for discharge nurse? Thank you. I mean, I was an old resident, but that's an old resident if that guy's a resident. I don't know if he's a resident. Yeah, I don't understand the storyline. She may be the... Suffering from dementia. She, she may be, yeah. I mean, I was old, but that guy makes me look like you. Yeah. Well, maybe not quite, but... It was a long time ago, remember? We had this discussion 21 years ago. Oh, Lou, it was the rain. I just passed out. Actually, Mrs. Bradley... Verna. Verna, you presented with lateral ST elevations and reciprocal inferior changes consistent with an MI. A heart attack. Oh. So when a patient has a heart attack, as they described it, an ST elevation MI, it's called a STEMI, you got to get a patient right away into the cath lab, which is where they put a catheter from your arteries, either from down below or from your arm, into your heart and either open it up with a stent or just evaluate and see if you even need a stent to begin with. And there's a very strict protocol as to how much time it is from the door to the balloon. 90 minutes. It. Yeah. So you, 90 you minutes have to be door there. to balloon. You have to be on the table and, and have the calf started. I've had a twinge in my back for a while. I thought it would go away, but then last night my legs went numb. This morning my back, the pain is just too much. Miss Chu, we're gonna push on a PCA pump. <laughs> Give you some morphine, which should help control the pain. Thank you. Okay. But there's a greater- That was quick, huh? It's an awfully comfortable PCA pump. That's a quick PCA pump. A PCA pump is a pump that's controlled by the patient in order to give them anesthesia. Usually there's an opioid in there. It's programmed so that they can give themselves dosages, but if they're using it too frequently, it times out and doesn't allow them to do it. Now, this is good because when patients have that uh, ability to control their pain relief, they generally use less of it and are more aware of how much they're using. As opposed to when a nurse comes in and doses it, they may overuse. And in and of itself, being in that much pain can be just just a humbling situation, so it, it returns uh, some measure of control to the patient. What's going on? I was just about to explain that Anna's MRI has shown that she has a myxopapillary pneumoma. It's a tumor in her spinal canal, but the good news is that we can operate. You have a 95% chance of fully recovering if we get you in the surgery as soon as possible. You know about that? No. I don't know about that. I know. And I don't know how he gets those stats right off the top of the dome. Even waiting another day puts you at risk for permanent paralysis. Mother? No. 
No surgery. Mr. Chu, without surgery, Anna will be paralyzed probably within the next 24 hours. I hate how they talk about medicine with such certainty, because then it tricks our viewers here from going into the hospital and when we don't give them direct answers, they're gonna be like, but Derek Shepard, McDreamy, told me that my tumor, if I don't operate in I thought you were McDreamy, no? I Sorry. know, but this guy. No, Mr. Chu, I We are taking our daughter home. Anna, you're over 18. You don't need your father's consent. Cool. This is true. I'm Mung and my father is the elder. If he says I go home, I go home. Do I continue to process our discharge? Yeah, we have to. It's insane, but we have to. Well, actually, we wouldn't process this as a discharge. We would process this as an AMA, which is leaving against medical advice. Because if we're telling a patient, hey, you may have a disability if you don't get the surgery immediately, and they choose to leave, we have to say that they left against medical advice. Otherwise, they can say, we told them to leave, and then something tragic happens, right? Right. You'd it's be, a legal thing. You'd be responsible. The problem that you have there is that you want to try to convince the patient and the family with logic and reason, but also some empathy. Because if you just throw the AMA papers in their face and walk out the door, they're definitely going to leave. So sometimes it takes a little bit of honey to catch the bees. So. I was married for 11 years. Addison is my family. That is 11 Thanksgivings, 11 birthdays, and 11 Christmases. And one day, I'm supposed to sign a piece of paper and end my family? A person doesn't do that. Not without a little hesitation. I'm entitled to a little uncertainty here. It's the moment to understand the magnitude of what it means to cut somebody out of my life. I'm entitled to at least one moment of painful doubt. I know nothing about their relationship, but that sounded very logical to me. Itu? Uh, you might want to have thought about that <laughs> before you jumped in bed with the intern. So, just, Scratch my previous piece just, of advice. I'm just, going with Dr. Espina, you, my among my elders. You, you might want to have a little doubt before you run off with the, the attractive colleague. Dr. Shepard, still here, I see. I couldn't leave you. Have you seen the other Dr. Shepard? I'll tell him you're looking for. So, um, Ooh, that's his wife? I guess. Ooh. Hey, I got Verna Bradley's test back. I don't think she had a heart attack. You have a look at the changes in her EKG. She had something. Yeah, but her serial enzymes and dopamine stress cycle came back negative. I actually think she's... Her dobutamine stress echo came back negative while she's having a STEMI. Let's explain what a dobutamine stress echo is. So uh, an echocardiogram is an ultrasound of the heart. You can give a chemical which actually stresses the heart, makes it beat more rapidly, which therefore makes more blood flow occur. Now you can look at the echo and see how the heart responds to see if the walls of the heart are moving appropriately, if blood flow is circulating appropriately within the heart. But now, why are they doing a test like that on someone who's actively having a heart attack based on the EKG? Let's do this as a patient simulation. We have like what, a late 40s female, syncope, chest pain, uh, negative cardiac enzyme with ST elevations with a negative stress echo. What's so your diagnosis that's, of this that's, lady? She's having an MI, so that's- You would say she's having an MI. Heck yeah. You're gonna say she has a left uh, anterior I'm descending saying until proven, lesion. Until proven otherwise, there's something in the left anterior descending. However, there's gonna be more drama and I'm gonna be wrong. I have an idea. What's up? She did something bad and she has Takusobo's carditis. No, she didn't do something bad, her husband did. And he's yeah. stressing her out and she has Takusobo's- uh, That's not a bad guess though. Broken right? heart syndrome. You're really, no, you'd see it on the echo. No, if it's resolved. It's no, a, it doesn't it's a resolve. stress response. It doesn't resolve that fast. Ooh, you're in trouble now. They're gonna crack his chest in the elevator. No, they're, they're gonna not. crack no, his chest not. in the elevator. No, they're not. No, they're Dude, not. No. We're not moving. Really? You think? You need a strong hand and a pair of sharp trauma shears right now. Oh. That doesn't really happen. We have generators. How's the patient? He's not looking so good. Can you, can you, You're a doctor, you, and that's your explanation of what's happening? Give the rhythm, give the pulse. Have you ever even heard of the Hmong people? Our religion has got rules that are way old and way set in stone and way spiritual, and you don't mess with them. And you don't anger the ancestors. Even if you pierce your tongue and play in a band. What are the rules exactly? Good move. When encountering a situation with a patient that culturally it's something that you are not familiar with. 
Smartest question thus far in the show, what are the rules? By knowing that, you might be able to find a point of compromise to fix a situation. Apparently, Anna's father believes she's missing something that she needs for surgery. Missing something? Missing what? One of her souls. We don't need a social worker. We need a shaman. There's a shaman. shaman. You definitely did not have a heart attack. <laughs> so I can go home. Not yet. Your EKG shows significant changes. And I'm going to find out why before you leave the hospital. How does he get home? Pete, you're in the hospital. <laughs> need to get home. No. I need to get home. So when you lose a lot of blood, uh, you become hypoxic. Your brain's not getting enough blood flow. When your brain doesn't get enough blood flow, it doesn't get enough oxygen. When your brain doesn't get enough oxygen, it starts saying crazy things. Like, you're in the middle of an elevator that's stuck, bleeding out from your chest from a gunshot wound, and you say you want to go home. No, Mally, blood pressure. I've taken it three mm. times. And? I can't hear a systolic over 50. So that's quite dangerous. That means he's not getting perfusion to his vital organs, including his liver, brain, and kidneys, which means that those organs are currently dying. I'll be right back. Wait, where are you going? To get an instrument tray. You guys are gonna have to open up his chest. Hot damn. We're just gonna have to get a shaman today in the hospital. Shamans are listed in the yellow pages. Our shaman is 500 miles from here. You are an arrogant man. No, I'm just a guy with access to a helicopter. Cool, let's see how this is gonna happen. Hey, where are you two going so fast? Kirk is talking George and Alex through heart surgery in the elevator. Shepard's setting up a shaman healing ritual. Rock on. I have porn guy. This show is really medically inaccurate, but it's hilarious. It is, it's funny. She has the porn guy. It's funny. Wouldn't have residency been much more fun if it was like this? We didn't have to operate in the elevators. We didn't have shaman. We just had patients who had no insurance that we had to battle to get them treatment. You never shaved your legs. What? But be sure you don't cut into the longer heart. Uh, how can I be sure of that? You just have to be sure. <laughs> On this date, for the past seven years, you have what looks like a heart attack. No. No, I know I've had some scares, but I don't... Every year on this date. Is there some significance to this date for you personally? No, nothing. What were you doing the first year, the, the first time you had a cardiac episode? Oh, I couldn't remember back that far. We were in the yard. I, I remember because our neighbor, what was his name? Ted. That's right, he died of an aneurysm, I think. And we watched as the funeral home people took him away and you had your first attack. And you were close to Ted? No. Oh, she shaved barely her legs. knew Ted. If this is Taco Tsubo, so I'm smack you. <laughs> I'm telling you right Come now. Come on, that's impressive. It's beating a little stronger. Excellent. Keep your finger there. Okay, now what? That's it. That's it? What's wrong with that picture? There's open flame in a hospital. And why is open flame in a hospital, especially in that bed, really dangerous? Put oxygen around there. Oxygen's a little flammable. Well, it, it potentiates the fire, yeah. You have stress cardiomyopathy. Cardiomyopathy. Bravo, what, Dr. Can you tell me what Mike. that is? I have an offer from Boston General. You took it to get away. We swore we'd never talk again about what we had together. This reminds me of The Notebook. You guys ever watched The Notebook? Romantic movie. I didn't see it. You didn't see it? No. We should watch it. Like a bro, bro night. Yeah, no. It takes away his pain. See, the thing is, Henry, Henry takes away my pain. Humans are weird. All of us, myself included. Well, we're all unique. And again, Did whatever. you just use a synonym for weird? Yeah. In a more positive tone? Yeah. I, I, Usually you're the dark one. I am, I am. I don't, I don't know, I'm in a good mood today, but yeah. It's and, probably because of the porn. It must be the porn. Choose me. Love me. I'll be at Joe's tonight, so if you do decide to sign the papers, meet me there. Oh. No, you didn't like it? Too narcissistic for your taste? Pick me. I hope you enjoyed our little collab here. If you want to see a playlist of all my collabs with Ricky, Ava, Gabby, Molly, click here. Say, do, do, do it, click here, click here, and stay happy and healthy. <laughs>